Okay. We have Mayana Dillinger. She is the candidate for the LA County Superior Court uh, Judge Seat 72. Now, you know that voting is coming up November 3rd, 2020. This is going to be one of the most critical times to vote. And do you know who's running? Do you know the propositions? Well, that's why I have her on the show. Many times, um, including myself and a lot of people that I talk to, we are not familiar with the judges that are running in the seats in LA County. Now, I know there are other people that may might be watching across the country. Know who your candidate is. I have Viana on the show today so she can tell you what she is going to do as a judge on seat 72. And as I stated, today uh, is September the 17th. Um, I'm here in Southern California um, where we've had some horrific uh, wildfires. I am in the San Gabriel Valley uh, near Azusa, Monrovia area. Um, the fire, thank God, has um, moved away from our area, but it is affecting the Mount Wilson Observatory. And uh, the U.S. Forest Service is fighting fiercely to uh, put this fire out. It has burned over 45,000 acres. It has destroyed many homes. Um, and uh, we've had about, I think it's about 36 people that have passed due to this fire. Now, this is just in Southern California. We have Northern California, the areas around San Francisco. There's fires in Oregon and Washington. Um, so we want to give our thanks to the firefighters who have been working day and night to put this fire out. Um, this is due to global warming. Um, we have to pay attention to global warming. And um, I'm going to show a video um, for a um, video of San Francisco on how bad the smoke is. And um, we're going to come back and then we're going to introduce uh, Mayana. Kitchen Talk family, we are back. And that was just a snippet of what the uh, smoke is in San Francisco. And it is extremely smoky. It's a health hazard. 
Um, I mean, it looks, as you can see, it looks horrible. Um, and um, dealing with COVID, we are now dealing with the smoke here in Southern California and those areas that are affected. So the environment is very important. Um, I do have Mayana um, coming on the show. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the environment, and then we're going to get into more about her candidacy as judge uh, for the L.A. Superior Court. And we're going to bring her up. And again, Kitchen Talk is an interactive show. We want you to put your comments in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe. Um, again, this is a time when we have candidates come on and when you know, need to know who's running, this is the time to ask the questions. Ayanna Dillinger, how are you today? Hey, good. How about yourself? I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you saw my intro, um, about this environmental issue. This is what's called global warming. Yes, global warming, as we know, climate change, as we call it, is, uh, of course, getting worse and worse, and we're not really seeing any um, effective and timely measures to stop it. So every year we set new heat records, we have bigger fires. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I want, want to, to play, play a video, video, and then I'm going to introduce you more, more to the viewers. Anna Dellinger, I'm running for seat number 72 on the L.A. Superior Court bench. So what about criminal justice reform? Will I be tough on crime when I need to be? Yes, I will be when I need to be. I'm not afraid of coming to the right decision, but I also think there's newer sentencing theories out there that should be examined in this context, such as rehabilitative justice, restorative justice, and so on. Experience shows us that just giving people longer and longer sentences doesn't have the intended effect, but in fact, that has a terrible effect on communities and on people of color. Remember, I'm not controlled by any special interest groups. I'm supported by grassroots community groups who support reasonable police reform in this area. And my name is Mayanna Dellinger. Check me out at dellingerforjudge.com and vote for me for seat number 72. All right. Like that video. I like it. I like it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it didn't speak... I'm sorry, I didn't speak so much to environmental issues, but I can just briefly tell you what I had said on my little environmental snippet was that I think that we need to do something about uh, environmental justice issues and climate change, of course, in general. A lot of times it's something that has to be solved by the legislature and not judges, but judges do occasionally hear cases in this area as well. I just finished a 10-year research agenda on climate change, and I'm a Fulbright scholar in climate change, so... That's been a great oh, interest of mine. Yep. That's, yes, that, that sounds interesting. interesting. Yep. That sounds, that sounds interesting. interesting. Yeah, I was uh, overseas in uh, an American German institute uh, as on behalf of the nation as uh, for the United. So Fulbright scholarship is uh, a very selective pro uh, process that you're selected to by the United States Department of State. And because of a lot of the research I've done on the area, they selected me to be a Fulbright Scholar in a short specialist stint, so I can go overseas every other year and teach and train people in other areas what to do and talk to them about what we do in this country, which is currently, unfortunately, not much at all, at least at the federal <laughs> level. <laughs> exactly. 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 Okay. okay. Well, well, we're going to, uh, as I always uh, say, we're going to work our life. Life. Um, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about your resume, resume. Okay. and I'm going to read it out here. Uh, Mayana Dillon, she, she is running, running as we all know, for the, uh, she's uh, a candidate for the, the Los Angeles County, County Judicial, Judicial Seat at the Superior, Superior Court, 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 Seat 72. Seat 72. Um, seat 72. Um, your judiciary related experience. Uh, you're a temporary judge, Los Angeles, Superior Court, trial and arraignment, worked on 300 plus criminal cases, as well as a dozen of immigration and civil cases, business, free speech, tort, constitutionally related police cases, etc. With trial and appellate level judge, judges, conducted legal research and writing and proposal legal opinion on the United States Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit, the nation's second largest court after the U.S. Supreme Court. And your high-level employment results 
you are a uh, professor of law, uh, National Range APA accredited law school, Fulbright Scholar, Climate Change Law and Policy. Um, my honor uh, writes very well for lay people and experts. Uh, uh, top, top 10, 10 authors globally, globally by downloaded SSRN for three, three years in a row. row. Your, her uh, articles have, have been cited to be more than 100 judges, attorneys, attorneys, government agencies, and, and other agencies. Um, we're going to go on and talk about graduating up to the class. Law school, law school class, class number, number one, one over 181. 181. Earned an uh, honorary, honorary title, title order, order of Hoyt. Yep. PhD candidate 2021, remainder, remainder online, online. Political, political science, science judicial, judicial election, election in California, California. master's degree in international, international communication, and your and personal, personal aspects, aspects. immigrant, immigrant TV, all legal results as, as a non native speaker. speaker. Midlife Mid career, career changer, changer. born and raised in a blue collar family. family. First, First in the family, family to get university, university degree. And you, and speak, you speak of three, three different languages, languages English, 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 German. And, German. Um, and, and you're, you're currently, currently um, University, university of Dakota, uh, uh, with a doctor of psychology and political science, 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 where you teach online. And, and uh, uh, Mayana resume, resume is on her uh, website, website, which it is dlindr for judge.com. I encourage all of you to visit her webpage, dillinger for judge.com. All right. Yep. What's an E? Dillinger, D E. Yeah. yeah, great. Yeah, that's pretty much it. It's been a, a busy life. A couple of little things. I'm a law professor. I'm also studying okay. for my PhD, but yeah, I'm a law professor. Okay. okay. And I worked with judges straight out of law school. Uh, it's called a research or it's a research attorney position called a law clerk, which is a high empowered behind the scenes experience working with judges, addressing cases, uh, attending the hearings, trials, panel hearings, uh, appellate hearings. And also proposing opinions. So in other words, doing all the research behind the scenes, working back and forth with the judges, uh, which gives me unique insight into how judges work, how they think, you know, I had the access that not many people have had uh, to be able to work that closely for years with judges behind the scenes, uh, picking their brains on how they think and seeing issues from both sides and learning um, at an early stage, training with the very best at the highest and also state levels on really how to grant just justice as justice is intended. So, uh, but I was not a judge. I was, it's called a law clerk. It sounds unassuming, but it's actually a pretty, uh, pretty prestigious role because you really do learn an awful lot about being behind the scenes with judges when the trial attorneys are in front and present their cases and then go home. Then I would stay and again, uh, help resolve the cases and uh, address all the different issues, motions, hearings, paperwork, research, drafts, and so forth. And even at the Ninth Circuit, which is considered the second highest court in the land, uh, proposing opinions. So in other words, the judicial opinions become the common law uh, or become the law in the Ninth Circuit, which is the largest in the land. So, and all of the opinions I proposed were adopted by panels of three judges at a time. And I'm proud to say that in 100% of the cases or the opinions I proposed that the judges then signed on to, all of the judges signed on to them, all of them in apart from one case. So in effect, I wrote part of the law in the Ninth Circuit, if you look at it that way, for a whole year. The upshot is I have that unique experience. It's like, you know, I have run a supermarket, if you think about it. Others have gone to the supermarket and shopped in line. That's, you know, great, too. That's the trial attorneys are in front of the judges. But I sort of ran the supermarket along with the judges as the store manager, if you do that analogy. Well, I, I'm glad you cleared that part of it because um, it has been said in this candidacy world 
that uh, you're saying you are a judge. So you're on my show right now telling me you're currently not a judge. You are running for a judge seat. Correct. Okay. I'm running for a judge seat. I have worked with judges at the state and federal uh, levels, trial and appellate uh, court levels. I have not been a judge. I worked very closely with them. I am, as you mentioned from my resume, it's been pointed out, and uh, you know that's on my resume, it's public knowledge, and that is acceptable to put on your resume that I also am currently a temporary uh, judge. So what that means is I sit for, uh, from time to time as a volunteer. LA Superior Court is so backlogged uh, that in the state of, or well, certainly in the county of LA, they use these temporary judges to clear up some backlog in some instances. So I'm volunteering to do that, but no, I'm not currently just, that's why I'm running to be one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And uh, have you received have you any endorsements now? now? I know I endorsements know are, are here, there, here there, but, but you know, you know uh, uh, candidates, candidates that are running, they do throw that, that out, out that I have been endorsed by. by. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's also on my website. So I think people, if they're curious, should, you know, go on my website. I really think I believe in a lot of transparency. So I just throw everything out there because I think it's important who you elect to all different positions and certainly as judges, because they tend to sit for life. So, yeah, let me see just from memory. There's a whole bunch of them. Uh, I have been endorsed by Maxine Waters. I have been endorsed by the Black Young uh, Women's Democrat Club of Southern California. A lot of different progressive democratic and more regular democratic uh, clubs. Uh, the uh, National Women's Political Caucus. Uh, the Sunrise Movement, which is related to climate change. And some uh, individual elected politicians. A whole bunch of attorneys, scientists, professors. Uh, so, uh, some judges, so I don't work on an everyday basis with judges uh, because I'm a law professor, so I don't have access to that, but it's typical that the people that do, uh, and a lot of the prosecutors or, you know, those are trial attorneys, they get all the endorsements of the judges, that's sort of considered the norm, so there's that, that's fine. Uh, I don't work with a lot of those, so I have other things, so what I have is a whole lot of uh, progressive and other democratic uh, support and also from some other groups like uh, republic smaller groups like republic young D republicans against trump um so a lot of grassroots uh, progressive uh, scientific more sort of another you know type of endorsements in my case which is fine you don't all get the same endorsements it's not as i say on my website a side by side uh, endorsement where well, he or she got this one and he or she didn't it's an indication of the kinds of people that uh, support you. And that, in my case, is not the traditional sort of establishment, which is a good thing. But check them out. I have a lot of good support by common everyday people. Okay, okay. Great. 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 Thank, Thank you, you for, for uh, letting us know about the endorsements. And again, everyone, this is a good talk. And you can uh, read more about uh, Mayana Dillinger, the website. Dillinger or judge.com. And again, it's very thorough. Um, he has podcasts, his resume, her ratings. Um, all of those things are on our website. And I have her on the show today. So she can personally talk to viewers, talk to LA County. Do you feel that the system is fair for people of color? No. Um, I don't, and it's not a matter of what I personally think. I think it's a matter of using facts and science and research and being willing to embrace problems as they exist and as they have existed and also looking at, you know, so we have a society made some mistakes. What do we now do to solve them? Do we do anything to solve them or do we just put up with the system as it is? And again, going back to my endorsements, that's why you can see I have a lot of you know, sort of non-traditional endorsements, but a lot of science and facts based and more, uh, you know, our revolution and some more progressive institutions. Because I think, and most people it seems to think after, especially after what we've seen this, seen this past spring and summer, that the system is really not at all fair to people of color and not even in California and certainly not to men of color. So just some statistics I looked up to be on the show here. We tend to think California so, you know, we're so progressive and so literal so liberal rather 
that is not really a problem. Yes, the racial incarceration uh, or racial disparities in incar incarceration is a huge problem. For instance, in California, uh, for every uh, out of every 100,000 people, 422 whites are in jail, 10 times as many blacks, so 4,236 people of, or men of color uh, per 100,000 than whites. Uh, and we pride ourselves as being sort of, you know, having a very good system. But for California, the, uh, the rate for male incarcerated uh, African-American males is one out of 22. So we're actually only doing right, slightly right. better as a state average than for in, worse than, uh, for instance, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Texas and Kansas. So, no, we know there's a big problem. The question is, how do we solve it? Do we solve it? Do we want to solve it at all? I would hope so. You know, so as you can see, I'm white, so why am I interested in this? You know, uh, I'm interested in this because it's a matter of, you know, I teach human rights to a natural law, and it's a matter of, we know this is natural law, that of course your skin color uh, shouldn't matter. We're all created equal, and it's, there shouldn't be any uh, differences based on just the way we look. And I have actually been speaking out about this for a long time and helped uh, with the environmental angle of this in particular, environmental justice issues. For a long time. So, for instance, I gave free legal advice to some of the people out in Flint, Michigan with the water crisis. Remember, they're still struggling out there with the badly polluted water. Remember seeing that on the news with how, you know, the water was brown, basically. And so even they're outside of the pure criminal justice issues. There's huge problems. If that had happened in a white area, we saw the gas leak in Porter Ranch. That was solved within a few months. And in Flint, Michigan, they're still struggling with that. I've also helped with the Standing Rock tribe in the Dakotas against the uh, Dakota Access Pipeline and helped them get uh, some advice about how to handle that and how to find attorneys, because these are really serious legal problems. Mm -hmm. So how to get other pro bono attorneys, because I have a full-time job, so I can't do everything. But just recently that worked out and they were able to actually have a judge out in uh, the Dakotas, I forget if it was North or South, stopped that access pipeline and ordered it emptied. Um, so, no, we see huge problems uh, for people of color, and I think that affects the rest of us, too, those of us that are white, too. When I see injustice, that affects me as a human being. I don't like that, even though I could just sit and not worry about this, but, I, you know, that's an injustice to me also when I see in my society, in my state, in my county, in my world, these injustices done that cause friction and bitterness and, you know, things that that also is unfortunate to white people. We just can't deny that. Okay. okay. And, 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 and that's that you, you know, you, know, you participate in your voice, your opinion, opinion about, about injustice. 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 What have, what you, have you done, done in, in LA, LA County? County? Um, um, you know, we, you know, with you know, all the shooting, you know, we had, had, we had uh, recently uh, here in LA, LA County, County. Um, it's happening. It's happening. What have you done in LA County that you know your opinion about this? Yes, right. Yeah, because we've known this has been a problem for a long time, and I think maybe it's been either hushed up a little bit or the media hasn't broadcast as much about it. But I have, during the campaign trail, this is I've been campaigning for over a year and a half right now. And I have been very outspoken the whole time before this was even the big issue it is right now among the general public about the need for diversity measured, you know, in race, but also measured in professional background, gender, you know, immigration background, everything in government, government systems and these racial issues and how the system, if it just goes on and on and on, we know that nothing is changed, nothing gets changed if we don't somehow shake up the systems a little bit and try to implement some better change. I've talked about my stance against uh, uh, the, these criminal justice issues and environmental justice issues, climate change, and even uh, the need for respect and compassion among, you know, by judges uh, towards people in the courtroom, all people in the courtroom. Uh, and sure, I'm not saying you should feel really sorry necessarily to embrace the serial killer. You know, that's not at all what I'm saying. But I have seen and uh, been subjected to quite a bit of backlash for even voicing out my opinions about this, which is astonishing to me. So I have even just recently on my Facebook pages uh, seen things like such as you know, the usual political, she's progressive, don't vote for her or whatever, but she's speaking out in favor of Black Lives Matter. You know, I'm like, yeah, of course I am. 
you know, so in other words, that people, and this is what I think is shocking, that just the fact that I have said and been open about my, not only my qualifications and my background, but the fact that I'm not an established candidate, and that I think we do, I mean, you know, we've seen it in the news after this George Floyd issue also, that we need to do other things and just put up little, you know, flyers in our front yards, that's good, where it says Black Lives Matter, but we need to actually, you know, have some painful discussions and do some things about it. But I'm seeing quite a bit of uh, backlash, I will say, from uh, people, and they might know who they are. Um, but, you know, somebody is probably more interested in having uh, the established candidates from the traditional backgrounds elected. Um, and it doesn't scare me off because I know people should and are interested in finding out what, who are these people that run for judges. So I, have too, had problems in the past finding out what the candidates stand for. And it seems like all judicial candidates ever say is, I promise to be a fair and impartial judge. And then, you know, that's great. Of course, we're all doing, of course, we all, you know, should, whether they are or not is another question, but they are, you know, most of them probably are as, as much as we all can be. But, you know, if that's the only promise you make, you're really not really helping people out at all. So I have been just pointing out that I'm aware of these issues. As judges, I can't necessarily solve things that are, you know, for the legislature and politicians to solve. Um, but I'm just pointing out what I see are issues and problems and that I see them and that sort of is my direction. So people simply know as a candidate what I stand for, as the Supreme Court has pointed out, that that's sort of of the utmost imp importance that judicial candidates and uh, people elected for judges publicly state their opinions and their qualifications and discuss you know, justice issues, so people can choose them or not, so they know what they stand for, instead of, as I have seen this, you know, hush, hush, I'm not going to promise too much, you know, I'm not going to list really much on my, you know, website, I'm just going to kind of run on, as I see it, the same old, same old, I'm not the same old, same old, I also don't promise I can change the world, obviously, okay. Okay. but uh, but I'll do whatever little bits I could as a judge, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, um, I don't, I don't know a lot, lot about the judicial system. system. Right. However, However um, if you, you get, get a case before you, you, you know, the, the incarceration uh, numbers, numbers are very high. high. Mm -hmm. um, 100,000 100, people. Mm -hmm. It's a report by the House of Policy in California, the right to the poor, and the blacks are 100,000. 236. Yep. Um, you know, can judges make in the concentration they uh, send uh, 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 kind of camp, uh, 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 yeah. yeah. Can you yes, I certainly can. So a question I've gotten a lot is, will you be tough on crime? It's sort of a buzzword. And what does that really mean? I mean, how, you know, so I, yes, I of course can be, and I will be, and I'm a tough cookie. And, you know, just ask my students, I fail them too when I need to do, and they moan. And I know that's different than sending someone to jail, but yes, of course I can and will do the job. I mean, take my, look at my resume again. It shows I've succeeded and helped other people succeed in basically every single aspect of my life. I think though, going back to your question, it's sort of what comes before, you know, the horse before the cart. And I think we need to look at what, you know, what is the systemic problem? Why are there so many black men, especially, and also in California, black males, uh, being prosecuted to begin with? Is it because they're disproportionately, uh, uh, you know, I don't believe that black men are more criminal per se. That doesn't make sense from a natural law perspective, right? So it starts maybe okay. earlier with... You know, family issues, drug issues, mental health issues, way early in people's childhood. You know, we've talked a lot about the uh, school to prison pipeline. Or is it uh, maybe that some, with black people, we know that, you know, it's everyday knowledge that if a black person has, you know, a problem with a car, well, we've seen that on TV, you know, the, the, it gets escalated a lot more quickly, I think it's fair to say, than with uh, white people. And so it's sort of a skewed system uh, before the problem or before the de uh, accused defendants even come before judges. But to then answer your question, that's all bad enough, and that has to be solved by not by judges, of course, other than how they could speak out and contribute to the issue in, within the uh, limits that are on, on what judges can say and do. But once you have an accused or a defendant that then becomes convict, convicted by the jury, then yes, judges are not just machines. 
you know, so I think a lot of people, you know, think of the traditional old fashioned thinking and spin will send them to jail and then, you know, they'll learn from their mistakes and come and be better people. And if nothing else, they're away from, from some years and we don't have to deal with them. They're not on the streets, you know, and they're not being on the streets. That might be the case again with some, you know, the real bad, violent offenders, repeat offenders. But judges are not machines. They do have some leeway. And in fact, in California, we have maybe more leeway than people think. So there's factors that, uh, that when judges then impose the sentence, once the jury has found a person uh, guilty, that judges can and should wait whether, for instance, the person could get probation instead of jail time uh, in you know, some cases, if that makes more sense based on the nature of offense, the background of the offender, uh, the family situation. And this will have impact on the person, the family, but also that Again, talking about systemic issues, the society and that person's community, right? And we know this is a community yeah, yeah. problem among people of color. Judges can also examine whether they could and should do concurrent or consecutive sentences. So in other words, if a person is convicted of two different things, do they serve out first one sentence and then the other? That will be you know, a lot more added. Or can they serve them consecutively at the same time? What is worse? So serious crimes, violent crimes, hate crimes, those are worse than, you know, maybe some of the drug offenses. So, yeah, there are things, a lot of things actually in California that judges can and should do, I think. And that's where I'm saying that I would be willing to, within what I could do, but to look at new theories and potential applications such as, like you mentioned, rehabilitative justice. Does it make more sense for the person to, you know, come back out and, you know, get some job training, some schooling, some mental health assistance? So that person can come back out and contribute to society. Uh, what about restorative justice? Should they work with the victim on fixing problems they've caused? So new solutions that really, as I see it, would, you know, is not being soft on crime. It's not being soft on the defendant. It's looking at, we have a problem here. Are there, for heaven's sake, some other problems or some other things we could do soon to start solving the problem for the sake of society and communities and not just in a matter of being you know weak or soft or whatever we know from research that when people get in prison for a long time for a long time they learn how to do drugs deal in drugs you know they become members of you know gangs in prisons and so on and so forth and so i just don't believe we know science and research shows that just throwing a person in jail and hoping that that person miraculously becomes cured and comes out a better person that was old. That's old-fashioned thinking. We know that doesn't hold. Okay. okay. Uh, well, we well, got you on record on Kitchen Talk that, that you will be diverse, balanced, and experienced, and experience. yep. and that and you that you will be open to, to make some more changes. Yep. For sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, we're gonna uh, take, uh, a take a quick break. break. Uh, uh, talk a little bit about the twenty twenty census. Then, then I'll play, I'll play one of your next videos, videos, videos the criminal 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 form, form, and then we'll and come then back and we'll talk about the war. It will help small business, not just barbershops, but all small businesses. The future is in education. The biggest improvement I'd like to see is, is the road. We need parks and civic space. I will definitely tell my friends to complete the census. It's important to figure out where we're going as a country. Um, so, yes, yeah, I pointed out there's been a lot of awareness here in the summer and spring about uh, uh, the district attorney's office and how apparently uh, not really, actually there's only one per Jackie Laser herself, uh, police officer uh, against whom charges have been brought. And I uh, find that questionable, uh, but that's not my area of business. But it seems like there's some just letting things go. We know district attorneys work very closely with police officers on obtaining uh, evidence to uh, to do their jobs. The DA's jobs is to you know get ev evidence to uh, win convictions. That's what they do. That's what we're paying, and they should do that. The DA's. I just question whether it makes sense. First of all, what's going on in that area? They could figure that out, and I know uh, Jackie Lacey is up for election as well. So. Uh, and they have admitted that they need to do some serious reform in that area and maybe less just letting things slide by and uh, actually maybe starting to set an example to actually prosecute some of these uh, brutal police officers. That's a debate throughout the nation. That's nothing new. The new thing is how much attention uh, has become on it this past summer. Um, so I'm saying that in my case, I am not a prosecutor and that's a plus. I haven't been a defense counsel either. 
that's a plus. So I bring to you the voters a uh, completely fresh, new, neutral, uh, uh, non-establishment background. I uh, would be weighing everyone's testimony fairly, and all the judges, I'm sure, do that too. I'm saying it does make sense to get some more diversity in professional backgrounds instead of having uh, quite as many uh, uh, people run uh, for or to become judges from prosecutorial background. About half. I'm doing my PhD research in this and I'm still counting, uh, and the other half are not necessarily from then the defense side. I'm just saying to have about half of judges come from that particular background is like saying half of our judges in LA County come from basically the same law office, for it is that, right? And so with the same training, maybe the same outlook on things, and certainly some strong networks, as I have seen, and sort of circling the wagon as they're doing right now to protect their own and sort of attack me which is done in elections, I understand that, uh, quite underhandedly in some cases. I'm a tough cookie. Uh, I conduct my campaign in a positive, neutral manner. I'm questioning not anyone in particular and their skills or whatever. I'm ca casting doubt about job functions and whether it would make sense to get some people in that, for one, come from different professional backgrounds, but also different personal backgrounds. So, for instance, I am an immigrant, I'm from Denmark, um, and I also am looking as much as I can at the existing judges. There's not much information publicly available, but to the best of my knowledge, there's not very many people that came to this country as immigrants, which I think brings some fresh new perspective to LA in particular. We know 25% of the immigrants to this country live someplace in California, and a whole bunch of us here in LA. And then yet you have a judiciary that I think everyone will say, including the judges themselves, we need more females on the bench. I've heard that from numerous of my male judge friends and female judge friends. We need just people with different life and professional experiences. We know that uh, different experiences can add value. It's not a minus that you're different, it's actually a plus. And so that's where I would add value. Uh, and perhaps to the criminal justice area by just, again, I know the constraints that judges are under, but I just think we see the system is broken. And I'm not an, an Albert Einstein, but we know Einstein said it's crazy to keep repeating the same mistake and to keep doing the same thing over and over and over when you know it doesn't work. So yeah, what I'm yeah. saying is we just have to figure out something different. And in the case of the judicial seats, I think it, uh, it makes sense that we get some, some different of different perspectives and backgrounds in to do whatever they can. Okay. okay. That's, 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 that's good. That's a fresh way of looking at it. So, uh, well, we're cleaning out the system. <laughs> you say. Yeah. So, uh, right now, um, you know, some would say uh, that you don't have a lot of reporting experience. Um, but as I talk to you now on the show, it's very informed what goes on in the court. You know what, if you add up my so-called court or my court experience with working uh, during law school for half a year, uh, then another half year working on an international, trib uh, four months on an international tribunal, and two full years nonstop, I added it up, I don't have those facts in front of me. But all of those work weeks with intense experience, working on thousands of, uh, of cases, many hundreds of cases, if you add all that up to, for instance, district attorneys who are in court, you know, sometimes during the year, but are in the back offices preparing cases, I actually probably have more hours of experience. And it's not quantity, it's not a matter of just mere quantity, it's also a matter of quality. So again, I work behind the scenes with all of these judges and uh, learned a heck of a lot, and that's recognized by a lot. Even the ABA recently said that law professors with clerk backgrounds and other skills make, you know, research shows really good judges. I mean, like Hagen, and we have many in California too. You don't have to be a district attorney to be a good judge. In fact, some would say quite the opposite because of the natural connections and, you know, knowing people you work with recently or whatever but be that as it may it's not a requirement it's up to californians what they want okay and okay. again i have worked with people also as a law professor people poop on that sometimes and they think is that like the elite tower i'm not standing there droning on and on about old cases like you know professors did in the old days i deal with things from the prosecutorial side the plaintiff side and civil cases defense side shifting issues dealing with you know auditorium style people you know 65 to 100 people Dealing with very difficult, you know, rapidly changing situations, reading, writing, researching, doing all those skills that it would take. A judge should be able to read the law 
uh, well and analyze it well. Write about it. They do that a lot, right? They're not in open court every day. They read and write a lot about these motions that are presenting to them. And they also deal well with people in front of people. And that's where I think people forget that I have and am doing that. I am not sitting, you know, I don't have an office job. I'm out there in front of people, granted, in a classroom and not a courtroom. But still, it's very similar experience. And besides, think about this. None of us have been judges before. Not a right. single one of us. We're all going to be sent to judge school first. And so that's where my yeah. experiences are spot on. Right. right. So, so uh, there were there three were of you running. running. Uh, uh, so now uh, it's down to uh, you and I believe uh, Morgan, uh, Steve Morgan yes. that is running. And uh, yes. he will reach out to his office okay. uh, to invite him uh, on. Okay. Uh, but well, we have him on today. Uh, I'm going to play the next video. Uh, this is from Tally. I'm running for seat number 72 on the LA Superior Court. Recent events have shown that there's been a lot of police brutality in LA County and elsewhere. For instance, a Los Angeles Times article stated that over the past 20 years there have been 880 incidents of police brutality, but only two were prosecuted. Of course, it's the district attorney, and of course, that's not a problem in and of itself. I'm not at all saying that. I do, though, support more diversity in many ways, including in professional experience, life skills, and background. I am not controlled by special interests. I'm supported by grassroots. That was you based on police reform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we yeah, talked about, about that, that earlier. earlier. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In, and again, in, I'll you know, just say, I think diversity not only certainly also measured in race but also in other backgrounds is a healthy thing on the judiciary for the judiciary as well as in all other organizations i'll also say i think there's a lot of focus on what would i do uh, as a criminal uh, court judge i don't know if people know that not all judges actually sit and preside over criminal cases there's family law judges there's drug juvenile cases ball claims traffic civil cases a lot of different types of judges. It sort of is a myth that you that you get to sit with these criminal cases. Yeah. yeah. What does uh, being uh, what does the seat number seventy two represent for you? Uh, nothing at all. It's just all numbers. All judges, all around five hundred of them, I suppose, are numbered, and they have the seat number. And so this lady chose to retire, and her number was 72, and so that's what I chose. What would that be? Um, so I think you said what it would be or what it would entail for to be an elected judge. So the no, way... No, no. If you if win, you win uh -huh. what will what that mean to, to you? Oh, to me, okay. The yeah, seat, judge? Yes, I got it now. Sorry and, about that. Yeah, okay, yeah, we're okay. overlapping a little bit. Um, so the way it works is if you win, the presiding judge will sit down with you and decide where they have needs geographically and in what area. Again, it could be drugs, juvenile, criminal, anything really. And then they'll see what your background matches up with and basically where they would like to put you, you know, hopefully relatively close to your home. Other than that, the number doesn't mean anything. And to me, of course, what it would mean at a greater level would be mean that I'm not seeking out this office for power or prestige. I already have, I think, some prestige. And being a law professor, I think that's a unique. I do that full time for a regular university brick and mortar on the ground with a high ABA rate. So I'm not seeking this out to get power or prestige. I'm just truly wanting to. I have a lot of good writing and uh, reading and writing skills and people skills and legal skills. And I'm just seeking to contribute that to the, with that to LA County. Okay. okay. All right. Well, you know, uh, I think it's great that you were able to come on the show. Um, I'm surprised. We did not get viewers commenting. I know they're out there because I see the number. So they are watching the show. But we're going to have you back on the show again on November 3rd uh, because I want people to be able to. Uh, know who they're voting for and i thank you for being very thorough and um uh forthcoming transparent um because you know there's another candidate out there i i've spoken to him i don't know much about him right um but we have you here and i thank you for coming on the show to talk about the judicial district of LA County, yep. and if you were to win that seat, 
and become a good that you would you really need to do. Yes. Okay. okay. Absolutely. So, uh, yep. I want to thank, thank you for coming out. Do you want to make any comments? Just uh, thank you so much. It's a huge honor. And again, I really do believe that uh, judicial candidates should, uh, under guidelines and Supreme Court president, talk out a lot more about our positions. And that uh, traditionally they have not done so. I think that's a shame. It's an election. Talk about a little bit, uh, everyone, is I want to first of all thank all the viewers who have. Um, who are watching live on YouTube and on Facebook. You know, this is a very critical time. Um, again, judges, uh, candidates are not uh, always uh, the one that most people vote for. They don't know much about them. Uh, right now, the current president has over 900 judges and um, we have a su Supreme Court judges that may one may be retiring and we hope that another Ginsburg will be able to last the next four years. But that will be two seats that this current president um, will be able to uh, put a judge in if he is reelected. So we want to be able to be very informative about our national issues and about our local issues. Uh, learn those propositions. Uh, remember, voting is going to be November 3rd. Uh, we want to uh, talk a little bit about that. I believe today is number 46. Uh, we have 46 days, three hours, 15 minutes, and five seconds uh, to vote. So we want everyone to actually go on to vote.org and uh, be sure to actually. Uh, you can go on vote.org. You can actually register. You can get information about how to register. Um, we want everyone to be informed. There's a lot of information out there on the internet. I'm presenting it on Kitchen Talk. And um, we have a lot of information. And we also will be bringing on someone on the show uh, to talk about um, where to vote. If you want to do the absentee, if you want to go in person, we're going to talk about that guys, but visit vote.org. You can also visit, uh, planyourvote.com. These sites are very thorough and has very good information, uh, for you, uh, to vote. So, um, please do that. We will see you all next week on kitchen talk. And uh, we're going to talk more about this. We're going to get more candidates on so we can be informed to vote. And again, I want to thank Mayana Dellinger. And she's going to come back on the show um, pretty soon. And you all have many questions to ask. Again, thank you for watching Kitchen Talk. 